In this video, we're going to talk about the factor theorem. So here I have my first example where we want to determine which of the following linear divisors is a factor of this polynomial 8x cubed take away 22x squared take away 7x plus 3. So for part one of the question, my linear divisor is x plus 3. And for part two of the question, my linear divisor is 4x take away 1. Now what we're going to do here is just like the remainder theorem. Actually, it is the remainder theorem. The only difference is that when we have a factor, the remainder is equal to zero. So I'll put the link in the description for my video on remainder theorem, or you can click the card at the top here. So now with the remainder theorem, we know that we're going to put our divisor equal to zero and solve for a variable. So for part one, my divisor, my linear divisor is x plus three. I'm going to put it equal to zero. I'm going to solve for my variable, which is x. So x is equal to, carry across the positive 3, turns to negative 3. And now we're going to substitute this x equal to negative 3 into my dividend, which is this polynomial here. So my dividend here is a function of x. So I'll just write that f of x is equal to 8x cubed, take away 22x squared, take away 7x plus 3. And now I'm going to replace the x in my dividend with this negative 3. So I'm going to have f of negative 3 is equal to 8 negative 3 cubed take away 22 times negative 3 squared take away 7 times negative 3 plus 3. Now what I could do is take my calculator and work this entire thing out. So now that I have my calculator up, I'll put the information in exactly how I see it here. So I'll put 8 open brackets, negative 3 close brackets. I could press my x cube button here, or I can use the yx button and put yx and then 3. I use the x cube button. So x cube, so it's cubit. Take away 22 open brackets. We have negative 3 close brackets, and I'll press the x squared button to square it. Then we have take away 7 open brackets, negative 3 close brackets plus 3. Press equal and we get negative 390. So I'm going to write f of negative 3 is equal to negative 390. Now what does that mean? It means when we divide this polynomial here, my dividend, by this linear divisor x plus 3, the remainder is going to be negative 390. Now because I got a remainder that is not 0, it means that this x plus 3 is not a factor of my dividend. So my question asking me to determine which of the following linear divisors is a factor of this dividend here. Well, x plus 3 is not a factor because we got a remainder of negative 390. Only when we get a remainder of 0, our linear divisor would be a factor of our dividend. So now let's look at part 2 where our linear divisor is 4x take away 1. So I'm going to put part 2 here. We're going to put our linear divisor equal to 0, so 4x take away 1 is equal to 0. And we're going to solve for a variable, which is x. So I'm going to carry the negative 1 across equal sign, it'll turn to positive 1. So we have 4x is equal to 1. Then we have this 4 multiplied by x. When I carry the 4 across, the operation will change the division. So we have x is equal to 1 over 4. And now I'm going to substitute this x equal to a quarter into my dividend. Now my dividend is a function of x, so I'm going to put f of x is equal to 8x cubed, take away 22x squared, take away 7x plus 3. So I'm going to replace the x now with a quarter. So we're going to have f of a quarter is equal to 8 times a quarter cubed, take away 22 times a quarter squared, take away 7 times a quarter, plus 3. Now I can put this entire thing into the calculator and work it out. So I'll put the information in exactly how I see it. So 8 open brackets. For a quarter, I'll put 1, use the fraction button, over 4, close the brackets. Press the x cube button to cube it. Take away 22 open brackets. Put 1 fraction button 4, so it has 1 over 4. Close the brackets, press the x squared button to square it. Take away 7 open brackets, a quarter, so that's 1 over 4, close brackets. 
plus three. Press equal, and you can see that we get zero. So that means f of a quarter is equal to zero. Hence, four x take away one, four x take away one, is a factor of this 8x cubed take away 22x squared take away 7x plus 3. Because this f of a quarter is equal to 0, which means we don't get a remainder when we divide this polynomial here by 4x take away 1. So I'm going to put since we got a remainder of 0. When 8x cubed take away 22x squared take away 7x plus 3 is divided by 4x take away 1 4x take away 1 is a factor of the 8x cube take away 22x squared take away 7x plus 3 now, part B of this question is to factorize this polynomial here. And the only way to factorize this polynomial is if we're going to divide it by a factor. So we're going to divide this polynomial by 4x take away 1 so that we can factorize it. Because 4x take away 1 is a factor of this polynomial. So here I've written out part B, which is a hence factorize completely. f of x equal to 8x cubed take away 22x squared take away 7x plus 3. So I'm just going to put here that recall, 4x take away 1 is a factor of f of x. And remember, we got that from here, that 4x take away 1 is a factor of this polynomial, because we got a remainder of 0. And now to factorize this polynomial, we'll have to do the division of polynomials. So I'll have the 4x take away 1 here. And then I'll write my dividend inside of here, which is the 8x cubed, take away 22x squared, take away 7x plus 3. So now I'll see my first term in my divisor into my first term in my dividend. So 4x squared into 8x cubed, 4 into 8 is 2. And x into x cubed will give you x squared. And now you're going to multiply this 2x squared by my two terms in my divisor. So 2x squared by 4x, going to give you back 8x cubed. And 2x squared by negative 1 will give you negative 2x squared. So now we'll subtract. Of course, these two things are the same, so you're going to get 0, so I don't have to write anything. But what we'll have here, we'll have negative 22x squared take away 2x squared. So basically it's saying negative 22 take away negative 2. So if you were to write that out, negative 22 take away negative 2, these two negative signs will give us a positive sign. So we have negative 22 plus 2. And since these signs of 22 numbers are different, we're going to subtract 2 from 22 and get 20. But 22 is a bigger magnitude, the sign front is negative, so we're going to get negative 20. So that means for here, we're going to get negative 20 x squared. And now we're going to bring down this negative 7 x. And now we're going to see our first term here into our first term here. So 4 x into negative 20 x squared. So 4 into negative 20 will give us negative 5. So that's negative 5. And of course, x into x squared is x. So now I'm going to multiply this negative 5x by our two terms in our divisor, 4x and negative 1. So negative 5x by 4x will give us negative 20x squared. And negative 5x by negative 1 is positive 5x. So I'm going to get positive 5x here. Now we're going to subtract again. Now these two things are the same and we are subtracting, so we're going to get 0. So I'm not going to write anything here. So now we have negative 7x take away positive 5x. So what we can write is negative 7 take away positive 5. These two signs, when you multiply them, will give you a negative sign. So we have negative 7 take away 5. Signs are the same, so you're going to add the 7 and 5 and keep the negative sign. 
So that's negative 12. So what we're going to get here is negative 12x. And now we're going to bring down this positive 3. So I'm going to write positive 3 here. So now we're going to see this first term here into this first term here. So 4 into negative 12 is negative 3. So I'm going to get negative 3. And x would cancel this x. So now you're going to multiply this negative 3 by our two terms in our divisor. So negative 3 times 4x is negative 12x. And negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So now we're going to subtract again. And you can clearly see this is the same as this. So when you subtract, you're going to get zero. Now we expect it to get zero because we use the factor theorem, which is essentially the remainder theorem to get a remainder. And we saw that we got a remainder of zero. So now my divisor and my quotient are factors of my dividend because I got a remainder of zero. So now I'm going to say 8x cubed, take away 22x squared, take away 7x plus 3 is equal to my divisor 4x take away 1 multiply by my quotient which is 2x squared take away 5x take away 3. Now essentially we have factorized here but the question says to factorize completely so we still need to check if this quadratic could be broken up into two linear factors. So let's see if we could factorize this quadratic. So I'll have 2x squared take away 5x, take away 3, and I like to write product sum factor. So my product is obtained by multiplying the first term by last term here. So 2x squared by negative 3 is negative 6x squared. My sum is my middle term, which is negative 5x. And now I look for factors of 6 that when I add or subtract, I'll get negative 5. And when I multiply them, I'm going to get negative 6. So factors of 6 are 6 times 1 and 3 times 2. Now if we check, both of these could give us negative 5 because 1 take away 6 is negative 5. And negative 3 take away 2 is also negative 5. But if we go to 1 take away 6, 1 take away 6 is equal to negative 5. And then we multiply the positive 1 by the negative 6. We're going to get negative 6. So this positive 1 and negative 6 satisfies both the sum to get negative 5, negative 5x five here, and the negative 6, negative 6x squared here. So for my factor, I'm going to write the positive 1 as positive 1x and the negative 6 as negative 6x. So I'm going to have 1x take away 6x because that would give you negative 5x. If you multiply 1x times negative 6x, we're going to get negative 6x squared. So now I'm going to replace the negative 5x with this 1x take away 6x. So I'm going to have 2x squared, and instead of negative 5x, I'm going to have positive 1x take away 6x, and I'm going to write back the negative 3. And now I'm going to factorize by grouping. So I'm going to look at the first two terms. I'm going to see what's the highest thing that could go into both these two terms. So I have 2x squared and 1x. So the only thing that will work there is this x. So I'm going to write x, open brackets, divide this 2x squared with x. So x into x squared will give you x. You'll remain with 2, so you'll have 2x. And when I say x into 1x, you'll just get 1. Then I'm going to look at the next two terms. And seeing that my first term in this pair has a negative sign, my 8cf will be negative. So now I'll say, what's the highest thing that could go to these two terms? Well, we have 6x and 3, so that will just be 3. So now I'll divide negative 6x with negative 3. Two negatives give you a positive, and 3 into 6 is 2, and you remain with x. And now negative 3 into negative 3, two of them are the same, negative and negative, so you're going to get a positive, so you get positive 1. So now you take what's outside the brackets, the x and the negative 3, write it in brackets. And then what's inside the brackets, that's the same, write it once, so 2x plus 1. And that's a factorization of this quadratic. So now I can replace this quadratic with these two linear factors. 
So I'll just write it over. 8x cubed. Take away 22x squared. Take away 7x plus 3. Is equal to 4x take away 1. Times my quotient, which was 2x squared. Take away 5x. Take away 3. And that will give you 4x take away 1 times this quadratic broke up into its two linear factors, x take away 3 and this 2x plus 1. And now I factorize my polynomial completely. Now before I go on to my second example, i just like to point out something. This quadratic here is a factor of this polynomial. Now, because this quadratic can be broken down into linear factors, these linear factors will also be factors of this polynomial. So when we go to our second example, we have a polynomial here, 3x to the power 4 plus p x to the power 3, take away qx squared plus 4. And it is divisible by this quadratic x squared plus x take away 2. Now the word divisible mean when we divide this with this quadratic, the remainder is 0. That's what divisible mean. And now this quadratic, if we break it up into its linear factors, its linear factors will also be factors of this polynomial because the quadratic is a factor of this polynomial. And they want us to evaluate the values of the constants p and q. So what I'm going to do is factorize the quadratic first. Now this one is simple. We can just put the brackets. The variable is x. And that's because we have 1x squared. So we're just looking for the factors of 2. So that's 2 by 1 only. And we want to figure out how to use 2 and 1 to give positive 1. Well, 2 take away 1 will give you positive 1. And if we multiply 2 by negative 1, we're going to get negative 2. So we can see 2 and negative 1 give us 1, which is the coefficient of x. And when we multiply 2 by negative 1, get negative 2, which is our last term here. So I'm just going to write the positive 2 here and the negative 1 here. And that's how we factorize this quadratic using the short method. Only because we have 1 in front of x squared. If we had a negative sign or like any other number, 2, 3, 4, you have to use a longer method with the product sum factor. So I'm going to write since x plus 2 and x take away 1 are factors of my quadratic, which is x squared plus x take away 2 and x squared plus x take away 2 is a factor of 3x to the power 4 plus px cubed take away qx squared plus 4 then x plus 2 and x take away 1 are also factors of the 3x to the power 4 plus px cubed take away qx squared plus 4. So that's exactly what I explained because these two are factors of this quadratic and because this quadratic is a factor of this polynomial then these two linear factors are also factors of this polynomial. Now what does that mean? If we were to divide this polynomial by x plus 2 we're going to get a remainder of 0 and if we divide this polynomial by x take away 1 we're going to get a remainder of 0. So we can say let f of x be equal to our polynomial, which is 3x to the power 4 plus p x to the power 3, take away q x squared plus 4. And if we were to divide this polynomial by this x plus 2, we'd have x plus 2 as our divisor. You put it equal to 0. You solve for your variable, so carry across the positive 2 to negative. So now f of negative 2, which will give the remainder, supposed to be equal to 0. And now if you do the same thing for your next linear factor, x take away 1. So x take away 1 is our divisor. 
So we put it equal to zero, solve for the variable, cut across the negative one, so we get x is equal to positive one. Then f of one is equal to zero. That means when I divide this polynomial by x take away one, the remainder is zero. So now if f of negative two is equal to zero, because this is a factor of this, and f of one is equal to zero, because this is a factor of this, then we can substitute negative two into here and put it equal to zero and substitute positive one into here and put it equal to zero. And we get two equations with our constants P and Q, which we can solve simultaneously to find out what is P and Q. So on this new page, I wrote over my polynomial. And now if you go back here, since F of negative two is equal to zero. All right, so since F of negative two is equal to zero, that would imply replace the x's with negative 2. So we have 3x to the power 4, so that's negative 2 to the power 4, plus px cubed, so that's negative 2 cubed. Take away qx squared, so we're going to put negative 2 squared, plus 4 is equal to 0. So this here is the f of negative 2. So now you know if you have a negative number to a positive power, the answer will be positive. So you're going to have 2 by 2 is 4, by 2 is 8, by 2 is 16. So negative 2 to the power 4 is positive 16. So you're going to have 3 by 16 plus p by negative 2 to the power 3. So we have a negative number to odd power, so the answer would be negative. So we have 2 by 2 is 4, by 2 is 8. So we're going to get negative 8. Take away q by negative 2 squared, so that will be 2 by 2 is 4, and negative number to even power, so we get positive 4, plus 4 is equal to 0. So we're going to have 3 by 16 is 48. This positive p multiplied by this negative 8 will give us negative 8p. Here we're going to get negative 4 times q, plus 4 is equal to 0. So what we could do is bring the 48 and the positive 4 together. Or we could say 48 plus 4, which would be 52. So we could have negative 8p, take away 4 times q, plus the 48 plus 4 equals 0. So we have negative 8p, take away 4 times q. This will give you a positive 52 equal to 0. Carry across the positive 52. So we have negative 8p, take away 4 times q, is equal to negative 52. And this will be our first equation. Now we're going to go back here and look at f of 1 is equal to 0. So I'm going to write since f of 1 is equal to 0, that's going to imply 3x to the power 4. So we're looking at this, replacing the x's with positive 1. So you have 1 to the power 4 plus p times x cubed, so that's 1 to the power 3. Take away q times x squared, so that's 1 to the power 2, plus 4 is equal to 0. Now you know 1 to any power will just give you 1. So you have 3 times 1 plus p times 1. Take away q times 1 plus 4 is equal to 0. And if you multiply anything by 1, you're going to get back the same thing. So 3 times 1 is 3 p times 1 is p, q times 1 is q, and that's how you positive 4. So what we could do is bring the 3 and the 4 together, or we could carry 3 and the positive 4 across the equal sign one time, but I'll bring them together first. So we have p take away q, then positive 3 plus 4 is equal to 0, so that's p take away q plus 7 is equal to 0, carry across the positive 7, so we have p take away q is equal to negative 7, and that's my second equation. So now I have these two equations which I can use to solve simultaneously. Alright, so I just came across a new page and wrote all the two equations. So you can see negative 8p take away 4 times q is equal to negative 52. So we have that here, negative 8p take away 4 times q is equal to negative 52 as our first equation. Then we have p take away q is equal to negative 7. So we have our p take away q is equal to negative 7 as our second equation. 
Now it's possible to solve simultaneous equations on your calculator, but only certain calculators can do it. So on this calculator, I'll have to go into mode. I press down, you see the um, little arrow here, it means you could press down. So press down. The EQN means equation. So I press two for equation. This means two variable simultaneous equation. And this means three variable simultaneous equation. So our simultaneous equation, when you have two variables, P and Q. So I'll press zero for a two variable simultaneous equation. So I'm going to press zero. So this is how it's going to work. One stands for the first equation. So this negative eight will be my A1. Then this negative four will be my B1. And this negative 52 will be my C1. And then it comes to the second equation, you're going to see A2. So you have one P. So the one in front of P is going to be my A2. This is negative Q, which is negative one Q. So the negative one will be my B2. And then this negative seven will be my C2. So for A1, I'm going to put negative eight, press equal, see B1 comes up now, which will be negative four, press equal, and now C1 will be the negative 52. Press equal, now it goes to A2, which we said is the one from the P. So we press one, equal B2, which will be the negative one Q, so that's the negative one. Press equal, and now C2 is the negative seven. So negative seven, press equal, so they're given this in terms of x and y, meaning x is the first variable and y will be the second one. So our first variable here is p and the second one is q. So for us, it means p is equal to 2. And if you press equal again, q will be equal to 9. So right off the bat using my calculator, I know that p is equal to 2 and q is equal to 9. Now, in order to get your calculator to go back into normal mode, You'll have to press mode, and you see normal here is zero, so press zero, and the calculator goes back into normal mode. So you come out of the mode to solve simultaneous equations. You're back to normal. So now I'll work this with all the calculator using the substitution method. Now the easiest equation to work with is this equation two. So I can simply transpose for P. So I'll put using equation two. All right, we're gonna transpose for p that's the easiest one all right so that means carry the negative q across to turn positive q so i have p is equal to negative 7 plus q and now this i will call my equation 3 and now i'm going to substitute that equation 3 into, well, we use equation two to form equation three, so essentially these two are the same, they're just in different forms. So I have to substitute equation three into equation one. So equation one reads, negative eight P, take away four times Q, is equal to negative 52. So wherever I see P, I'm gonna replace it with this. So this P here is gonna get replaced with negative seven plus Q. So I'm going to have negative 8, and where I see P, I'm going to put that negative 7 plus Q. Then I'm going to have to take away 4 times Q is equal to negative 52. So now if I equation from having two variables to having this one variable, which is Q. So I can expand the brackets here. So I'll have negative 8 by negative 7, which is positive 56. Then I'll have negative 8 by positive Q, which is negative 8 times Q, 8Q. Then I'll write back the 4 times Q is equal to negative 52. These two are like terms. So I'll write 56. And then we have two negative signs. So we're going to add and keep the negative sign. So 8 plus 4 is 12. So I'm going to get negative 12 times Q. So that's negative 12q is equal to negative 52. So now I'm going to transfer the positive 56 across the equal sign. I will turn to negative 56. So I'll have negative 12q is equal to negative 52. Take away 56. Now again, these two signs are the same. So I'm going to add and keep the negative sign. So you know 50 and 50 is 100 and then 2 and 6 is 8. So that's negative 108. 
So negative 12 times Q is equal to negative 108. And now we have this negative 12 multiplied by Q. So we have Q is equal to character cross operation changes to division. So we have negative 108 divided by negative 12. So Q is equal to positive 9. And now that we know that Q is equal to positive 9, we could have substitute that into equation 3, put this Q here, and we can find out what P is. So I'm going to substitute Q equal to 9 into equation 3. So equation 3 reads P is equal to negative 7 plus Q. So that's P is equal to negative 7 plus 9, because 9 is Q. This Q equal 9 here which is Q here, which is this 9. So now negative 7 plus 9, signs are different, so you're going to subtract 7 from 9 and get 2. The bigger magnitude is 9, the sign front is positive, so the answer is just positive 2. So you can see we get the same answers. P is equal to 2, Q is equal to 9. Same thing got on the calculator. All right, so let's write answer. P is equal to 2 and Q is equal to 9. And that will bring us to the end of this video.